Welcome back. I'm Don Garbutt. I'd like to play a short musical example for you. What you're seeing and hearing here is Tornado being operated by an external program called M by Cycling74. In order to get that all to work, I'm running a live MIDI sequence running live audio units or VST instruments in a framework host program called Bidule by Plog. Bidule is a very powerful and inexpensive audio and MIDI host program made in Montreal. It's a bit like Max Reactor or Logic's environment and has lots of resources and capabilities for processing audio and MIDI. It comes with numerous object configurations, which are called bidules, which is French for things. The one that you're looking at is one that I made to enable Cycling 74's M to control tornado effects, processing a piece of music that I made in Logic. You're probably wondering why I didn't just skip bidule and hook up M directly to Logic to run tornado, but to explain why, I have to explain what M offers in the first place. I'll be doing a more detailed tutorial on M in the near future. M is a standalone MIDI sequencer created back around 1987 or so, made by a company called Intelligent Music. It was rewritten for OS X by Cycling74 and is still available. M allows real-time control over options including sequence choice, random reordering of notes, transposition, channel outputs, accent patterns, durations, and rhythms. You can set variations for these parameters in six different boxes. When you get a configuration that you like, you save a snapshot. Clicking on these buttons was enabling me to select snapshots of the M settings. There are other cool functions of M, but I'm going to leave those to the next tutorial. So to summarize M, it's a sequencer that can send out note messages in various curious ways in real time, scrambling their note order, changing the note channels, changing the note patterns, and that sort of thing. It's a very interesting sequencer, and I haven't seen anything quite like it in any of our recent technology. I had this idea that I could use M to control the knobs in Tornado. There's only one technical problem with this, though. Working in Logic, I could be working on my piece and adding Tornado in as a plugin. But to bring M into the story, there was a little bit of a technical hang-up here. The technical problem is, to run M and Logic together, you have to use some kind of syncing technology. You could use MIDI Clock, except for two big problems. M won't slave to MIDI Clock, and Logic won't slave to MIDI Clock. This is a problem because if you're using MIDI Clock, something has to be the master and something has to be the slave. But if neither one of the programs will slave to external MIDI Clock, then you've got a problem. To get around that, I decided to make my piece in Logic and save it as a MIDI file. I could then load the MIDI file in Plog Bidule, and I could have the clock from M driving the synchronization of the MIDI file. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Let me just explain a little bit about what this device does. This is a bit like inter-application communication. This object here allows MIDI messages to come from another application. When you boot up Bidule, it actually creates four of those MIDI pathways that you can access. I've renamed one of these pathways, and you can see the other three that are left here. Each one is a 16-channel MIDI feed. I'm showing you here in Logic, just as an example, when you go to Transmit MIDI Clock, you can see those four Bidule pathways. This is the one that I had renamed. This is M's Preferences page. Here you can see the targets for the 16 channels of note messages, and if you click and hold here, you can see the various MIDI ports. You can also see that MIDI port that I renamed in Bidule when you choose your MIDI Clock Send. This object represents the note messages that I may want to play from my keyboard, and if I want to test out an instrument, I could simply just drag a cable to a device and play that way. The MIDI file looper object holds MIDI files that are sitting in what's called the media bin. This 16-channel MIDI file will play 16-channel messages to a MIDI file channel splitter. This object will split the notes by channels so that I can have channel 1 go to battery, channel 2 to the next battery, channel 3 to the massive bass, and so on. So this is the array of VST or audio units instruments that I have set up. 
I had to set these up the same way that I'd use them in the logic track. So for instance, if you double click on this audio units instrument, clicking on the load button allows you to call up a preset that you saved when in logic. So first what I did was I saved the presets on the instruments that I was using so that I could find them easily when I went to plug video. These objects are selected from the new menu by opening up the menu and selecting audio units, music devices, and then finding the devices that you want to use. So you see the MIDI file playing the multi-channel messages, the messages go to the devices, and also the MIDI file is synchronized to an object called MIDI clock to sync. The MIDI clock to sync object turns MIDI clock into video sync, which will synchronize the MIDI file player, and it'll also synchronize the time variable elements of the patches on your instruments. So you see when you call up an instrument that may be using a sequencer or arpeggiator device, Along the top panel, you have the header, which allows you to choose where the sync is coming from. You could have chosen to sync right from the input sync device here, but what I've chosen is the MIDI file looper. So when it's running, all the instruments will play in perfect sync with it. I've got the stereo outputs coming from the audio units instruments into a mixer. We're not going to obsess about the graphical look here. It actually does a very fine job of summing the audio signals. Down here, I've added a Rob Papen Predator so I could access its effects basically just for EQ and EQing the general mix. That signal is going to the Tornado. You see the Tornado connected here? It needs to be synchronized as well because you have time-based pattern processing in this device. So you choose again, the syncing capability right up here on the header. Now what I've also done is I've extracted program changes by an object that is actually a filter in visual terminology. Now what that does is it enables you to have the unfiltered material come out this cable port and the filtered material, as in program changes, coming out this port. And you might have noticed at the introduction to this tutorial that the Tornado was actually changing patches while it was playing. It was getting program changes sent from the M program. In the next part of this tutorial, I'll discuss some very important aspects of Plog Bidu, including how to convert M's notes into controller messages. Thanks for watching. Thank you.